thanks for supporting us on Patreon. Welcome to our monthly critique. <laughs> hey, bitches. Someone's you know? hit leave meeting. <laughs> Don't do that. No. No. Nope. So, uh, Cindy's running the show tonight. What? Yeah. Wait, what? Huh? What? Oh, no, Nidia I'm okay with that. Nidia took turn, took notes too. Oh, so, did you? Yeah, she did half notes. Then I got the second half too. But, um, so we watched Paris is Burning. Um, we were looking for things to watch. We didn't know what to watch. I had always wanted to watch, watch it. Um, it's been all over the place. Nidia loves, uh, drag race so yeah paris is burning was the correct uh choice now let me just tell you that rupaul and his little drag race got me through the whole pandemic and i have to say that it got dana through a whole little depressive issue definitely so it was my saving grace and cindy i only wish that you would have embraced it like we did (laughs) <laughs> we love the queen <laughs> um yeah i think i lived through that so i saw a lot of this in person uh going to a lot of the clubs when i was younger so i i got a chance to be there for some shit not like i just really this. think not like I really think you burning balls but yeah because that's a whole I, other uh it's thing. a whole new it's a whole world that's like it's yeah. so funny it was so funny to hear all of the terms from 87 that like are just getting to the straight world now. It's like, Mm -hmm. it's so beautiful. Yes, queen. Beautiful. (laughs) And then you're like, bitch, they've been saying that for years. They've been saying gross shade for years. Yeah. Yeah. And they're reading you for filth. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Oh, so good. So good. So, but it's good to know where all of this came from. So it, it, the the documentary starts with New York scene, then uh, seeing uh, the people on the street just walking around, and and I can't remember his name because it didn't pop up with his name um, on the first scene. And he's he's talking about his dad and the th- the s- strikes that he has against him. Yeah, for being black. Wait a minute. Being male. Can can we? Can we talk about the freestyle music in the opening scene? <laughs> look, look, my first note in here, freestyle music playing. I should <laughs> cut, come on now. I had it right there. If, if that wasn't <laughs> indicative of the 90s, I don't know what is, honestly. It yeah, really it is. Great. We felt that, especially because we grew up listening to freestyle music. So yes, that oh, was that. actually on my notes, freestyle music play. And, um, and then, the of course. The music through the whole documentary was really great. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it was. Mm-hmm. So he's talking about the three strikes he has against him. Being Black, being male, and then on top of that, he's gay. So, and, and he's just walking through, just discussing the world. And um, and was this... Peppa LaBeja that came up the first <laughs> one. And Peppa LaBeja. Can we talk about his name for a minute or her name for a minute? Um, LaBeja is, can be taken two ways. For mm-hmm. those of you that don't speak Spanish, mm-hmm. Beja, Beja means beautiful. Okay. So it could also be, so La Beja means the beautiful. It can also be, uh, you know, uh, interpreted as beige, you know, she, he's a light skin, you know, so I, I took it both ways. A lot of the names that these, uh, these, um, queens. girls have the houses. Queens. Yeah. Yeah. These Queens have, um, have double entendres. And that is so fun. Cause I love a good pun. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yes. Mm-hmm. But the the one and, and I wrote I said the queen in gold and that's how I was like when when La Beja came out and started doing uh, their thing on the stage and during the ball and they're draped out in that gold on ensemble and I was just like oh 
and then they were the <laughs> they were the current ruling house mother of right. the house of Levasia. The legend talking about the legendary children and who who's gonna be coming up as an up and coming legendary child. And right. it's just like what you know what these queens did with their homes and opened up their homes to these children basically children because they were abandoned and and left basically left their homes before not being accepted at 13 14 years old and 15 years old and didn't have anywhere to go and weren't accepted by anyone and that one group of kids that were talking about how when they walked in there they were accepted where everywhere else they weren't Right. They can walk in there and feel safe and feel welcomed automatically. And that was like, that was a big thing. And, and to this day, we still feel the same way. Like I, I know I was taken in by a friend of mine when, when I left my home, but I, you know, I was 20, 20 already, 21, almost 21 years old when I left. And, uh, and I just remember, you know, this is probably the same thing that they had, but they were so much younger, you know? Right. Um, and when you walked into the barn, how did these houses were made? They were <laughs> created just basically because, oh, you got a trophy, now you get a house in your name. Right. And that was like, I was like, that's how the houses were created? <laughs> well, I thought it was really, I think it's a really beautiful testament to a estranged group of people you know from society that like really just comes together and like takes care of their own people like mm -hmm. they're just so marginalized in every you know this this documentary really does a really great encompassing of like not only the queerness of it but the racial aspects of it and the classist aspects of it and I thought that it was really really you know if, if you didn't live this life or or haven't felt marginalized by anything like this is a way to really see a side of the world that you're like holy shit I didn't know anything about this mm -hmm. you know or like I didn't you know you you know people go to New York or go to LA or go to big cities because they're going to be more accepted there, but they're like, I mean, they're coming with nothing in their pockets and no family and no help. And like, yeah, they, they want a house or they want a trophy and they got to like win a house, but like, they like literally are bringing in little kids that have nothing and they're like teaching them the ways of their world. And I think that's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. They don't win a house. No, I know. I don't no, I know. They I'm just saying yeah. they, they win a trophy and then they, they establish their house you know, yeah. the house of Corey or the house of Ninja or the what, and I, I know we'll get into all of that, but, but even some of them were like, you know, you couldn't get into the house until you won a trophy, but that wasn't always the case because then you saw like, no, these kids just had nowhere to go and they, and they just brought them in. And I just, that's so like gut wrenching, but beautiful at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I saw the uh, gold LeMay gold sequence that mm -hmm. Pepper LaBeja was wearing, I yeah. wrote, Jesus Christ, the pageantry, because <laughs> she had around her people with feathers, like those feather fans, and like, yeah. she had a whole entourage before entourage was even a thing, you know? Well, really? and it also looked like, it looked like they were in, like, a fire hall, like, it wasn't like they were, you know? A, like, a, a veteran's hall. Yeah, like uh, a BMW yes. or something, yeah, like, you're like, where the fuck are they at? It's not like they're, like, <laughs> what we think of, like, a drag show now with, like, a stage and a what, it looked like right. a bingo hall or something, mm -hmm. you know? Uh -huh. They're like, we don't give a shit, we just want to, like, dress up like a schoolgirl, dress up like a, a man in the workforce or whatever, and I just thought that was so, like, such an angle of it that I had no idea. Mm -hmm. You know what I, I really um, loved about it that was like heartwarming? They made all these categories at these balls to make it so inclusive that mm -hmm. even the ones that weren't serving up realness could yeah. still <laughs> participate. They were the butches, yeah. you know, yeah. and the, the newly drags and the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And even the military and the business suits. And like, yeah. I was just like mm -hmm. living for it. And mm -hmm. the guy that was like doing the announcing through the whole thing that was like, you got to 
put your hands together because it took courage because you bitches are ruthless. <laughs> uh huh. It says give a round, give a round of applause for for nerve. That was the quote. Give a yeah, round of applause right. for nerve because because like you said, they are ruthless. They yeah. are ruthless, and and we there's more to that. We'll get into that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But I love how they how they said that they prepare for it like any other sporting event. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Well, the the one part where they said they came to the ball starving mm. at times, and they just says they didn't eat, but they were coming to the ball because right. they that was their thing. That was where they were welcomed, and they could be fully themselves and who they were. And then they come. They'd steal to come dressed up for the ball, too. <laughs> I found so many of RuPaul's sayings in that. Mm -hmm. Like, Definitely. I was just wondering where RuPaul got that whole, um, why you, uh, sh why you gagging so? She bring it yeah. to you at the ball. <laughs> when I wow. heard her say, gag on it, gag on it, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you or know. fierce or shady. <laughs> because yeah, you know that like throwing shade and all that shit i'm like oh my god they've been saying that since the late 80s mm -hmm. like i mean yeah and even like i looked up when because you know we'll get into it when they talk about like the voguing and the dance mm -hmm. you know whatever but i'm like madonna's vogue didn't come out till 1990 like they no. were yeah. already voguing before yeah. they never even mentioned madonna when this documentary came. so like like a whole culture was like built around you know what these drag queens homeless were doing, kids you know they were yeah. homeless kids yeah. homeless kids yeah. pretty much and and, yeah. and they lived the streets yeah they literally lived the streets and then you had pendavas because i thought it was pen, pen divas but it was pendavas <laughs> i think they said that their name was yeah yeah kim um, pen davis yes sewing sewing their gown and they had a protege, which was pretty, and they were t discussing, you know, how long did it take you to make the top? Just an, an hour to make the top? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Freddie Penn Davis for president. <laughs> I, loved, I loved him. He was like, I'll walk when I walk. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next year, but don't hold me to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I loved him. He's like, I don't want to talk about them queens. They need to be talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved him. But then here comes Dorian Corey that makes yes. the makes the screen. My heart. And now, I'm sorry. Just I know they don't cover it. On they, here, but do you know about the Dorian Corey thing? Yes, I do. I, yes, I okay, do. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, we'll talk yes, about it. Yes, I do. Later. So that's Save why I was like, I got, I, I've got post notes. Okay, like, all right, all right. Go ahead. At the end. So, go ahead. but she was talking about how they were dressed up as dancers when they were doing it. They would dress up right. as Vegas showgirls and I how things that. have changed and how they transitioned. And here they are. Uh, Dorian's like piling on that you know that makeup that movie star makeup in the background you know and they're talking about everything and how it started out as just being drag queens dressing up to look like Vegas showgirls and then it transitioned into trying to be Hollywood and now right. here they go and they're doing they're doing just executive or whatever it right. is they were you know, like the supermodels categories yeah. have changed um based on how how things have transitioned and changed to become more and accepted. if you if you watch drag race you see that even through yeah. the years like you can see and like i kept it, i don't know if you remember nydia from one of the seasons or sort of early on yeah. um there was a queen that came on that was older, an older queen, and she was, like, wearing the red leather, and she got, like, immediately eliminated, and she was like, I'm yeah. old school, I'm old school, and I was like, you could see that a lot from this documentary in that mm -hmm. queen, like, I was looking for her, and mm -hmm. the yeah, extravaganza, well, Lestrand, uh, right. Lestrand extravaganza, or whatever mm -hmm. the yeah. it is. There were still queens from the old houses 
Mm -hmm. And, um, and there were still the pageant queens and the, right. the different categories. So yeah, yeah you mm -hmm. still had a lot of that balls thing, but how much did I, I lived when she said, when, um, uh, Dorian Corey said more balls, less drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, the thing about RuPaul and like not to keep talking about RuPaul, but the thing about RuPaul, because RuPaul came from that, that era, yeah. you know, and, and yep. in New York and in that time. And like, that was where like, you know, Ru got their start. And the thing about RuPaul in, um, what is that movie that, um, the guy party monster or whatever, where he is from that circuit and he kills the queen, the drag queen angel, you know, that whole story, right? Mm -mm. Oh, there's this, there was a drag queen in that circle in like Rue's circle. And like, he was a drug dealer or whatever. He was like the party monster. I think, uh, uh, Macaulay Culkin played him and he kills another queen and like goes to jail. And it's this whole thing. Uh, maybe we should cover it on the podcast. Cause that's like actually a very yeah. good story. But Rue, and, like, Rue knew that guy, and, like, you know, you'd see a lot of these, like, queens that have, like, built careers, and they're, like, we're the only reason that we, like, got careers out of this, this drag is because we didn't do drugs like everyone else. Like, Rue yeah. got out of there and was able to make a successful career out of it because Rue never did drugs, mm -hmm. you know? And, like, that's the thing that Dorian Corey was, like, sort of talking about. Like, if they didn't do so much drugs like they really could have you know turned these beautiful talents that they had into careers you know right 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 but she also goes on to say about how when it got closer to the 80s the balls became more about being more aware of yourself and being more of yourself instead of being just some showgirl some hollywood person personality and her talking about how, um, and I'm using the pronoun her. Um, yeah, I think mostly they did. Mostly they did. Um, uh, she, she said, I tried to be like Marilyn Monroe or one of those famous Hollywood people. And here, all I wanted to be was Lena Horne. Right. And because, because Black stars were stigmatized, they stayed away from that. Whereas now they're, you know, they, when they do that executive and she used the, the, I think it was her cause I wrote it down here while she was speaking, talking about how black people have a hard time getting anywhere. So becoming an executive on that ballroom and walking down that ball, being an executive and showing that they can be an executive if given mm -hmm. the chance. But because yeah, they're so stigmatized, they cannot be that, so they show that they can be by presenting themselves at the ball. Right, so like a, a, they an executive, yeah, they could never get a position as an executive, you know, dressing the way they dress or living the way they live, so they were like, get the approval from their peers, which I did, I did think that was an interesting way to mm -hmm. look at, you know, those different mm -hmm. subcategories, you know. Mm -hmm. The town and country, that <laughs> had me, the oh. prancing, the <laughs> prancing. I loved it. Yeah, but the school, that one. A kid going to school and the kid was like was sitting on the floor writing in a notebook with like a little ball cap or whatever. I was like, it was school. So... Wait, it was called school girl realness. Yeah. <laughs> and then he even said, I think, I think she was saying like it's almost going back, like it's so real that it's like looping back into like heterosexuality <laughs> well you know what she says it's it, the, the realness i should say mm -hmm. realness yeah. came from the fact that they wanted to be able to blend with their heterosexual yeah. counterparts passing so that yeah. so that they could pass yeah. not because because they were so out of the societal norms you know and they were right. so ostracized by by their communities that they wanted to be in a place where, hey, I can pretend to be you and look yeah. at how real I come off, right. you know? Right. But, like, my favorite was, like, Shantae, Shantae, yes! Shantae, Shantae. <laughs> I was like, Rue still says that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wrote <laughs> I'm like, damn, Rue, do you have your own catchphrases? What the fuck? <laughs> I thought he was unique. Little yeah, did no. I know that the whole no. show... 
his whole yeah. persona is based on Paris is burning. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I ain't mad All at it. it. No, I'm not mad. Literally everybody talks like that now. So. <laughs> but also the truth is, Rue came from there. Right. Yeah. Right. He was probably doing all the circuits. Yeah, definitely. Right. You know, yep. going to all the balls. And <laughs> now he's got a pipeline mm, running playing with all the backyard. balls too. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> got 10 minutes before I have to restart. Um, but yeah, the, that realness thing, they use the quote is like going back into the closet, but not really. You know? Right. The, right. You know? Um, and then I think Lavasia makes a makes an appearance again and talking about their being um Love coming out and talking about the their home life and mm -hmm. how their their dad saw them on the street their mom or the dad I can't remember but one the of the dad went back yeah mom was embarrassed but loved them and told their your son is is a woman now mm -hmm. and then um and then the dad destroyed their mink coat. The mom. That was the mom. The, mink coat, the mom yeah. destroyed the mink coat. Sorry about that. So, how they, dare she? <laughs> also, mink. you can tell that it was the '80s and '90s where mink still mattered. Now you can literally <laughs> go to a Goodwill and get a mink for three dollars. Mm -hmm. My uh, my grandmother, my great grandmother, had like given me this piano in my house, like when I was like two years old, but she also gave me like this mink shawl, like a thing that <laughs> no. like goes over your shoulder. No. <laughs> and I was like, I would simply never. So I gave it to my sister. I was like, you should have something from the family. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Which sister? Tabitha. It's my dad, okay. on my dad's side of the family. But yeah, it's like this like real, like genuine like fox fur or something. I don't know. Mink. I don't wow. know what the fuck it is. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, not that Tabitha would ever wear it, but like, <laughs> wow, wow, yeah. it seems more okay. inclined to have some shit like that than me. Definitely, yes, yes. Can we no. can we talk about Venus Extravaganza? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that queen just made, and she called herself a femme realness queen. Is that what she said? Yeah. Mm hmm. Because she that, just has. Yeah, and so I think. You know, and we're, I don't know how much we want to, like, dive into all of that, but, um, because she was one of the ones that, like, wanted to have a sex change operation, and then, mm -hmm. like, you would come across other queens that were like, no, I'm a, you know, I'm a guy that just likes to wear women's clothes, right. so, like, you know, the, uh, throughout this whole documentary, of course, many things are, like, we don't use a ton of that terminology anymore, or, like, even have some of the same ideals, but, I would say, like, she was definitely a trans woman that, like, did not have any question about, like... Well, she, she, she even said, right, yeah. she even said that she never felt even a little bit masculine in her right. whole life. Mm -hmm. There was nothing so, masculine about herself. And then yeah. she was like, I just want to be a rich white woman because they get whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, me too, baby, me too. <laughs> Yeah. you're at least a part of the way there I, uh, <laughs> I get all the not none of the fun stuff unfortunately <laughs> but yeah hey, uh, I, she, I remember her saying she ran away when she was 13 14 years old because she would dress as a woman and it just wasn't accepted she didn't want to so embarrass she left her to family be in new york Right. I was, so she was on the street since 13 and you know 13 and 15 years old you know mm. Mm. that's tragic and she she be she became a sex worker right yeah it said that she was like dabbling back and forth and that there was uh she was the one that was talking about the instance when she was like i guess with a john i guess you would call him and he mm -hmm. found out that she was you know had a penis and you know it was like you tried to kill me you tried to give me aids and he like attacked her and she jumped out a hotel window which is like it's so fucking she, scary. She died, didn't she? She's the one at the end that dies, yeah. She was yeah, yeah. she was found strangled in a hotel room. Oh, and her murder was never solved. Are you kidding me? Her yeah. murder was never solved. I was looking it up. Um, they believe that she was also probably, like, a bad sex work situation happening. 
Yeah. And that she was killed in the hotel room. That's so sad because she was so full of hope, you know? But yeah, you know she what? was she was the one that was saying, like, I just want to live a normal life and have yeah. my sex change and be a real girl and marry the man I love and, you know, have a car and move away from here. And it it, it is really, I mean, what could she have been, 20, maybe? Right. She, she was, was 23, 23. Uh, wow. You know what I, I, I noticed that throughout the whole um, uh, Paris is Burning thing, like a theme throughout that these young, you know, they were black, you know what I mean? Yeah, People right. They were black and color. Hispanic. Yeah. Black and Hispanic. I consider that the same. So the they were people of color. So they all wanted to be white women. And RuPaul always says that he thinks he's a rich white woman. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, why that though? Like you can be a, bl- a rich black woman. That well, exists. Because there's, I think, I think the thing, you know, about white women is that they are very coddled you know we are very like we're what like society like takes care of and we want to you know you you have to like even if you get murder across all of true crime like what is every case is covered as is white women whether they'd be rich or before you know there's there's twice as many people of color you know women of color that are murdered and we hear half of their stories like that's the thing about white women, you know, all throughout history is we've been so coddled and like taken care of and babied and, you know. And, and I mean, come on now, look at a, our Aruba stories. <laughs> right. <laughs> Leave I mean, Aruba alone. <laughs> or Aruba. But yeah, I mean, they, like the, the Pepito sto- the story, I mean, they, they're the ones that get the attention. Or, or even something like Emmett Till, you know, like where a, a white woman can say anything about a person of color and it's taken as the word of God and they're believed no matter what. And, you know, everybody else is in the wake of the, the, the trauma of, of what they have to say and do, you know? Mm-hmm. So hence the reason why they needed these houses and these fam- these made made their own families you know well and they called it gay street gangs i know i got that in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> and their street fight was the ball <laughs> yeah. i love it can we all just freaking fight it out in the dance floor like can we just do I mean, they really did and hence when voguing she... came into play wait when she was like describing how I forget which one it was, but when she was describing how she would, um, like, take her compact out and like beat her face, <laughs> and then and turn it around and show the other girl to beat her face, I was fucking dying. I'm like, <laughs> yes, because it looked so good, and you could picture every bit of it, you know? Yeah. yeah. And when she said beat her face, I'm like, that's the thing they still said. Like, I was just like, holy shit, this is crazy. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. it, it you know, the voguing. Uh, that's when Willie Ninja comes on the screen, and they start yeah. talking yeah. to Willie about um, and how he was the most uh, powerful, best voguer out there, and uh, and he starts talking about his dreams, and and they also go into the stories about the um, the the terminology that we're all so familiar with, but. We have one minute left. I'm going to go restart this. Okay? Okay. And we're back. <laughs> That's my line. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're back. We're talking about uh, the terminology and the fights that occurred during uh, the ball and the shade that occurred during the ball. And that's one of our favorite terms <laughs> is um, one of the things was the shade. And I remember um, the men's coat and I put in quotation because the one person was doing realness, <laughs> dressed like a man. And they were like, Oh no, he's wearing a he's wearing a woman's coat. Look at where the yeah. buttons are. 
And that's I, where Shay came all in. She was like, the in. buttons are on the right! The buttons are on the right! <laughs> and they would use Shay to disqualify the heck out of each other. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. So I loved it. I loved it. And and reading to find flaws in each other. So yeah. Lydia, you know all about the reading. What was that? I didn't know about this until you guys... Reading is fundamental. <laughs> Reading is fundamental. <laughs> That's RuPaul's thing. Yeah. So reading they take you is, to the library. <laughs> right. Reading is insulting. So the way that he explains it, that LaBeja, La I think it was that explained. No, was it LaBeja or was it Corey? No, I think Dorian. It was Dorian Corey. Okay. So Dorian Corey describes it as, you know, you have two black queens. They can't say, well, you're a black queen. And, you know, they can't insult each other because they're on level playing ground, you know? Right. So what they do is they find a flaw and they exaggerate it. And that is called reading. So, um, and when you're read to filth, <laughs> which I love, is when you are taken down a couple of notches. Yeah. <laughs> she read her to filth. <laughs> Little did we know, all of this came from uh, this time, and it was all in Paris's burning. Well, they're you, usually on RuPaul's the, when they do the episode of the reading, you know, where they where they go to the library. Ru does say, like in honor of our queens from Paris, from Paris is burning. Oh, they do. We're, right, we're going to the library. He always like has that one episode where he like says it, you know, and because it's so well described there, which I didn't know that, you know, I knew it was from that movie and I knew what it was just from RuPaul's, but I didn't know right. Like, like, you know how the I, how the reading turned into shade, and then shade right. turned into voguing. You know, mm -hmm. also like how the whole show is basically a ball. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. The whole show, the right. whole show is basically the ball. Yeah. It really the is. Whole, it is. It really is because because you know a, a big part of it is them making their own costumes and their mm -hmm. attire on RuPaul's. And that comes from them being poor kids off the street and wanting to make these beautiful costumes and having to learn to sew and having to, like, learn to, you know, make these gorgeous, you know, things with no money. And, you know, some of the first challenges on RuPaul's, you know, the first couple episodes of the season is, like, they'll give them, like, bags of trash and they have to, like, come up with an outfit or you know, Halloween decor, whatever it is. And it's, it really is like, you know, all of these challenges are like all of these little micro, uh, what did you call them? Categories in, in the balls. Yeah. Like, so yeah, mm -hmm. it really, it really is like based on this whole scene. It's, mm -hmm. it's very right. cool. Mm -hmm. I, I, that show brought me so much joy me and too. it wasn't just me it wasn't just me like no. Russ was looking forward to watching this with me he was rooting for his favorite queens yeah he and we I we really it brought me genuine genuine me joy it I really mean, really did yeah, yeah I was really surprised podcast by on it. this I was surprised huh? by it there is a podcast on this that uh we're friends with on 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 some of the socials oh, is there? yeah it says, it says thanks for coming and it's the, all about the, the shows you know i feel like i they're on tiktok there's two drag queens from rupaul's drag race um really trixie and mm -hmm. trixie um, mattel trixie mm -hmm. mattel and um <laughs> Uh, Katya they like have a show and they do at little things on TikTok and they're like best friends and it's so funny it's so fucking funny to me because they just like laugh at each other and they just love each other and it's just like they're just so shady and they just like I just love them so much <laughs> they just bring me so much joy you know they really do yeah I might start watching again I'm, I'm like sitting here like I think I'm gonna watch it again. <laughs> yeah, it was like a straight up infusion of dopamine and yeah, vitamin and D. I only and watched all the first six seasons, so I'm like thinking maybe I'll just pay to watch the rest of it because I really want to see the rest of it. You know? Yeah, Nidia, you okay. have all the seasons, don't you? I had to pay for some, but it's like literally one of the yeah, shows that it was just so worth it. Yeah, but yeah. there's like 
there's hundreds of seasons though there's like Ru- uh, rupaul's uk rupaul's australia oh my RuPaul's, god like yeah like they're that's a lot so, like so you, you got plenty even, to choose from yeah you couldn't even keep up if you tried on <laughs> but it, it's pure joy pure yeah. joy and, and it's all based on basically all of it's based on the stuff that was happening to when Definitely. paris is burning and stuff was recorded and um going back to ninja and his voguing and his dancing and how voguing came from basically street you know their form of street fighting right and but it also (laughs) came from the magazine vogue and the poses that they were doing whenever they posed and modeled for for vogue so like you saw the 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 cover of Vogue, and if the model is doing some crazy pose, they're doing it on that at the ball on that floor, and yeah. <laughs> and it was their form of sorry, it was their form of street fighting, and you couldn't touch each other, you couldn't touch each other, touch each other, you were out, you know. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah, it was, was, it fair. was amazing, but um. There were some things in there, and I said, and that I wrote, and it said, um, um, where they talked about everything was taken from us, and I wrote this uh, quotation: "Everything was taken from us, and we still survived." If you could capture the great white age of living, and I found that interesting, and I put that in quotations. Um, so even though that they 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 were taken from us, they were not given the best of life. They still managed to survive and do and, and live um, despite all the all the um, basically the hard parts of life. Yeah, well, they were served. Please. They were served a tough a tough uh, mm-hmm. lot in life. Mm-hmm. How about those? 13 and 15 year old little boys that were out on the street. I know. Where's your mother? Breaking. <laughs> like, I don't have a mother. <laughs> oh, it was so sad. The one had a mother, but was all the way over there. Was In too the busy. Yeah. Probably working two, three jobs to make yeah. ends meet. And then the other one was like, there's no mom here. They yeah. look baby they look babies the one they looked look younger like than the other one and it turned out the other one was even younger I was yeah like, no. yeah no. yeah did you ever so watch sad. the movie kids back in the day I did but mm-hmm. I don't remember it, it really reminded me of of that like when they were talking to their kids and I was like yeah these kids are just like fucking out here just like mm-hmm. walking around New York City with no like guidance no love no you know and it's just crazy but that was fake. This is real. No, mm-hmm. I understand that. <laughs> yeah. like, that yeah. was, I know it was a movie. I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. How about the moment where they're doing the clash, the classroom, in the classroom, and they're teaching New York City girls who are hard to be more, to have more class? <laughs> Wasn't that, um, what's his name? Freddie Ninja? Willie Ninja? Willie Ninja, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, he, so, he gave um uh was it uh classes on how to walk properly with etiquette, right? Etiquette, yeah, like yeah, etiquette he, classes. He yeah, and I found that so interesting that he did that. Um and, and and I just found it interesting. Now, one of the things that we left out uh, or we haven't gotten to, and Nydia says this was the last moment that she took notes on, and that was mopping. <laughs> so while for the longest time people were making their gowns or uh, or creating their gowns from scratch um and, and they talk about this how they started to transition and actually try to buy or or get a hold of designer clothes instead of just right. creating it yourself and uh whenever they would get a hold of something they would call it mopping which was basically stealing their clothes um for the ball right when she was like 
bring back so and so's shoes because they want their <laughs> shoes back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was I'm Venus's, like, uh-huh. wasn't it? Venus's shoes. It was definitely an extravaganza shoes. Carla, Carla extravaganza. <laughs> they, they were size seven. <laughs> lies lies by 17 maybe uh, well if they were if they were venus extravaganzas she was small and she that was, was one of the things she was saying like she's like they like me because i have small hands and i have small feet <laughs> <laughs> but the one that was uh, t- during the whole mopping conversation in the part where uh, the old white people are looking at them crazy because they're uh, uh, at the Roy Rogers. And he was talking about how he stole $1,000 worth of, or or what was it? Whatever amount yeah, it, was it was of Roy, Roy Rogers, Rogers yeah. food. I'm like, dude, you have to steal the whole fucking refrigerator to steal that amount of food. I think he was saying that, like, he stays stealing from them. Like, it was like, <laughs> over time. Yeah, yeah. I think he, he was like, I hope they don't see this and then change the way we get food because that's how I steal all the food from there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, well, don't tell everybody how you're doing it. So, yeah. Freddie, I, Freddie needed to be protected at all costs. <laughs> oh my God, definitely. <laughs> so basically, the showgirls would hustle. And yeah. and find ways to get their clothes for for the ball, and not only that, but they would also go out and hustle, which right. is probably what ended up happening with Venus in the end, um, to basically survive. And um, the can we one- all just talk about um, uh, Dorian Corey's? wise wise ways the entire documentary dorian is putting makeup on mm-hmm. putting on her whole you know yeah. get up and she was just spitting wiseness i mean yeah. she was just all in as like the fucking original og yeah mm-hmm. i i loved her for that because she had insight it seems like she understood the ways and the future of the way that it was all going, that the movement was all going. Not only that, it sounded like to me, and like maybe this is just coming from somebody who's in a headspace of, you know, constant reflection, you know? But she really felt like to me, um, she was, you know, past it. You know, like, like, I just want to leave a mark on this world. And I realized that just by surviving in this world, I've left a mark. And, and, you know, you're just like, that's like some wise ass shit, what you're saying. Like, because when Mm -hmm. you are young, right, like, you're like, I want to make a difference. And I want to be famous. And I want to be beautiful. And I want to be all these things. And that's what they were all saying. You know, the younger ones were saying all of these, I want to, you know, be so famous. And then she's just at the end, just very like, yeah man like if you survive you did it like that's the best Mm -hmm. we can hope for in this world and I'm just like oh my god Mm -hmm. (laughs) I know she was she was and then to find out what happens to her at the end is just like tragic but you are gonna tell us though right I am we're gonna talk about it yeah okay can we that's why I'm like going like this like (laughs) (laughs) so um the one um model who was uh there was a couple a pair of women that were um trans women that were walking through the beach and excited because they had the one had had her sex change and she was excited mm-hmm. about that and I remember LaBeja talking about I'm glad I didn't do it because some people change their minds after they have that and it's so expensive I'm glad I but right but you know but that was but but he was not a trans woman he and was some of not them were trans you know, and and that was the thing that I think that is an important distinction, mm-hmm. you know, is that not every drag queen is a trans woman. Mm-hmm. Most of them are not, you know. Most of them are not. That's right. And, but I think, I think in that world, you know, just an observation is that trans women were really able to be protected within the drag community because it was safer for them there, mm-hmm. you know? 
Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But well, also, are you talking about um, what's her name? Um, Long Rokas. So, are you talking about uh, uh, what's her name? Um, hold on, I wrote it down. Um, oh, shit. Uh, why am I Saint Laurent? The girl. It called might Saint be Saint Laurent. Laurent, but I have written down Brooke Extravaganza. Had oh, this, okay. Brooke or Carla, yeah. one of those, because it had both of their names in there. Yeah, it oh, wasn't okay. Carla. It wasn't Carla. So then it, it was Brooke, Brooke Extravaganza yes. that had the sex change. But they were together when they were talking about it on the beach. Okay. Yeah. Now, Saint Laurent might have had the change. I'm not sure. But I believe she's the one that went to the Ford uh, modeling search. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yes. She and, like was serving realness. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and they interviewed Eileen Ford, which is that's taken aback. Yeah, some of the, when they were like talking to the like white people from that like era or whatever, I was just like, "Why are you wasting your time with these fucking idiots? Like, we don't care about that at all." <laughs> <laughs> and and it kind of ends towards the end there, you know, talking more about how. The ball started changing. It, uh, some people were talking about how it wasn't as fun as it used to be. They start giving some updates on people, um, for instance, and they start talking about New York City and how much it started to change, and how Vogue um, people the voguing was became started becoming popular, and they talk about how it became popular in Harlem, which yeah, but it became popular from the balls. And um, at that point, Ninja was featured in the in one of the articles, and he became a choreographer. He started actually doing what he had always dreamed of doing. Right, that was and, cool. Yeah, that, and he had said, "I want to go to Japan," and then he was like showing off his jewelry from when he was in Japan, and and all of this. And he's like, "I did that. I actually bought that. He didn't mop it, you know." Yeah, <laughs> and. Um, and so it was just to see that there was some progress and positive things that came out of all of that. I gotta wonder though, how did Madonna meet and and my, become involved with Ninja? I bet you through Studio Fifty Four or something like that. Probably, that's, yeah. That's what I was I was thinking about that because I was like, what year did Vogue come out? I must know <laughs> because mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck is happening here? Mm -hmm, yeah. And it's got to be you know through some fucking she met some cool ass queen along the way and well, and, didn't he, she work with him specifically? Oh, I don't know about that at all. I, th I think they mentioned that. That would make sense. That would make sense. It would make sense. I know that he did work with some big name people, and he got a chance to travel everywhere. But specifically Madonna, I don't remember. I didn't write it down, so sorry. I yeah, well, think um, if I didn't hear it on there, I think I heard it on RuPaul. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that wouldn't yeah. surprise me because he was definitely involved, quite a bit involved in everything. Um, and also in in the, towards the end, in the credits, and I told Dana, I was like, watch the credits. Because into the credits, they continue to give more information. They talk about Venus's murder. Um, one of the, um, one of the, extravaganzas i guess one of the venus extra venus extravaganza no but um, one of her uh family members you could say was oh. talking about how you know she remembers her taking risk that venus taking risk and yeah going off and meeting with people and so it makes you believe that there is a possibility that it was you know one of those moments where yeah sex work situation going awry mm -hmm. yeah i think that's what you know most people believe is what happened mm -hmm. considering you know the location of her body she was like found strangled underneath a hotel mattress mm -hmm. like a, under oh a hotel my box. god really mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's featured quite a bit in a lot of podcasts true crime podcasts yeah wow. i actually i googled uh you know i listened to a couple episodes of some podcasts just because i wanted to know a little more about the murders and that's when i found out about the dorian Corey thing she, she I know, cover it. 
<laughs> we we should cover it because it's very interesting. Yeah. So yeah. I knew about the Dorian uh, story from a few podcasters. Um, but so basically, when Dorian passed away, they found they went to clean up her house, and in the back of her closet, they pulled out a trunk, and there was a mummified body inside the trunk. Right. So Dorian Corey died in 1993 of AIDS-related complications. Mm -hmm. And um, she gave all of her dresses to another queen that had been taking care of her. And that queen found the body. And um, that they, like, had to rehydrate the mummy's fingers so that they mm -hmm. could get, like, fingerprint analysis. And, like, they really don't know, like, the, the interesting thing I think about that part of the case is that they, that body was found, uh, they, like, carbon dated it or whatever, or they, you know, dated it 15 years. They believed it was in this suitcase for 15 years, except he had been missing since the late 60s. So, like, also, Dory and Corey lived in that apartment for less than 15 years. So, like, mm -hmm. it was either Dory and Corey moved that body when she moved into her new apartment, or the body was already there, or she was hiding that body for another queen to not get away from. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, there's no, a lot of like, theories. Yeah, there's, like, so many very interesting theories about... You know, that could be a whole episode, the crimes around, surrounding Paris's burning. Yeah, I mean, a, a, lots of podcasts have covered both mm -hmm. those two. The, and the problem with both cases is no, nothing's been solved. Right. Neither case is solved. And police don't give a shit because, right. you know, they're trans women of color. <laughs> you know, like no but, one cares. But also, you know... The crime to the person because it was a man, mm -hmm. and nobody really knows, you know, what his so deal was and what why. We, what I know about his deal is that he had a girlfriend or a wife, and she had a seven year old kid, and he beat the shit out of the wife and the kid. Mm -hmm. And he, she said, if you know, she called the cops, said, if you put your finger, you know, your hand on my kid one more time you know, I'll kill you, I'll press charges against you, whatever. And that was the last time anybody ever saw him. And that mm -hmm. was in 68. But that's the thing. If she, if, if she died in 93 and mm -hmm. he was supposedly, his body was in that suitcase for 15 years, what the fuck happened to him from 68 to, mm -hmm. you know, what, 70-something? You know what I mean? Like, it, right. 15 years of 93 is not 68, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So what the fuck? Somebody, and one of the theories is that he was killed for to protect the 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 other woman, the woman, the, his wife, I guess. Right, yeah. Yeah. But how the fuck did his body get in Dorian Corey's house? Because Unless Dorian Corey had nothing to do. Up. Yeah, like, it's so, it's very interesting. Very, very yeah. interesting. Yeah, there, there's a lot of Can't wait for Dana to cover it. <laughs> I mean, that's it. That's the story. <laughs> no, there's more to that. There's more to that. Yeah, I'm sure there's more to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's I think so uh, Dorian was like, like either the guy's boyfriend or her friend or there's something. No there's no way to some, know. some relation. Yeah, but there's, because the, nobody ever knew, like, Dorian's friends and family don't recall him uh, don't recall her ever dating a guy named bobby whatever his name was bobby something they're like yeah i don't i don't remember him dating that or her dating uh, someone named bobby but you know that's not to say that dorian didn't keep that secret for a cis man that didn't want his business out there you know what i mean like, right, right. that's something that happens with trans women all the time so especially in the 80s and especially during the aids epidemic not to change the subject, but I will say uh, Nancy Reagan was trending this week on Twitter for being a very good dick sucker, which I said was a thing in the, the President's Cheese episode, uh, the problem with government <laughs> cheese. 
And one of the, it was like trending all over Twitter. And one of the things was Nancy Reagan didn't have shit to say about the AIDS epidemic because her mouth was full of dick. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, that being said, I saw a TikTok today about that. And it, not really about Nancy Reagan sucking dick, but something to the effect that, oh, the, the something from this area ran ran over like they were getting in line for nancy reagan's uh throat or something Yo, to the fact that i was like i'm ripping, like i am done i am they done were the ripping day. nancy reagan so hard on twitter about her being like the best dick sucker of all time and i'm like i just Who started that because fucking ben Dana shapiro's did. no i didn't <laughs> ben oh Shapiro's yeah sister <laughs> Ben Shapiro's sister made a tweet, you know, d- 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 tweeted a picture of Madonna at 63, all sexy on a bed, and a picture of Nancy Reagan with her family, and was like, who would you rather be? And they were like, Nancy Reagan was the biggest dick sucking fucking blah, blah, blah. Like, why they called her throat, like- goat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, throat goat. <laughs> throat goat. <laughs> But, like, you're trying to, like, sex shame Madonna when, like, what the fuck? Like, when Nancy the first Reagan lady was, was the, the worst. <laughs> also, who would pick Nancy Reagan? Like, they oh, love wh- the Reagans. They love the Reagans. And, like, poor Nancy, no, listen, not poor Nancy Reagan. She's dead, whatever. But, like, her poor family has to, like, watch on Twitter that they're, like, grandma. <laughs> like, <laughs> the dick sucking queen of California. <laughs> the great grandma at this point. Mm-hmm. Damn. Oh my god, that shit made me laugh so hard. I was fucking dying. I was like, I fucking said that shit two years ago. <laughs> 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 Funny that I remember Amanda brought that up. Uh, uh, one of the, my co workers brought that up when she heard about that. When you uh, mentioned it, uh, she brought it up to me. She's like, I can't believe that part. <laughs> Anyway, it's I was true. I was really glad to watch this documentary. I uh, I had never seen it, so I was mm-hmm. I was glad to watch it. You never saw Paris is Burning before? No, it was no, just like ne- one of those things. That I-, that I was like, yeah, I want to watch that, but I never got around to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yes, we watched it. So this is I'm now the second time I see it. it. Yeah, you should watch RuPaul's Drag Race. Just saying. <laughs> Honestly, I think you, you would, would like it. it. It's very good. Maybe I would. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll have so, to drag her over. And watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Kidnap her. Yeah. Might have to. So, um, anything else? Anything else before I stop recording? No, you tell me. You you took the notes. Oh, no, that was it. That was Great it. Great job, Cindy. Thank you. Occasionally, I guess you're right. <laughs> What are you doing? (laughs) Thanks for dining with us. See you next month.